Hi everyone. So I would like to do a review of my Vostok Amphibia Scuba Dude with the 710 case. Um, so I'd like to preface that this watch, I really like this watch, so any negatives are kind of, uh, you know, not a huge deal to me, but uh, yeah. So first off, I'd like to talk price because I like to talk price. This watch is like $79. $80 depending on where you get it. There's tons of sellers on eBay. I bought this one from Marinome.com, which is the official supplier and the manufacturer of Vostok watches. Um, there's a plethora of different case designs, dial styles. Um, you know, there's Amphibias, there's Komandowski, there's uh, Dress Watch, there's all kinds of stuff. So that's the best site, in my opinion, to at least see what type you're interested in. But again, there's tons of sellers. One thing with buying Vostoks or seemingly any products from Russia, um, I've bought razor blades, for instance, from Russia, and all the shipping is, takes a very long time. I don't know if that's because I live in North America and they're overly picky with Russian products or if the shipping, just the Russian mailing system is slower or what, but when I was tracking this thing, it went from Russia to the Netherlands to Germany and then to uh, Canada where I live, so the shipping took me approximately three to four weeks so it's quite slow um, I think I ordered this in September and it came in about um, mid to late October I've had this watch for almost two years so um, I guess more like a year and a half so I can't exactly remember but I would you know if you can handle the shipping the time this is a great piece so as you can see here, this was not a stock Vostok. The stock form, it has this bezel on it, which I changed because uh, I just like the look of a painted bezel better than this bezel. I guess this is kind of what it looks like. I'll put a picture in to see what, so you show you what it originally looks like, but I would imagine you've seen it because this is seemingly the most popular version. The bracelet I put on here is different. The original bracelet uh, is what everybody says it's not very good um, I tried to wear it for a week it's high polished I like the looks of it I like high polished bracelets it's, you know I, I, for instance I like the look of a Breitling bracelet but this thing just it it's just so cheap there's hollow end links that come with it as you see here um, I like that it says I guess that probably says stainless steel I love the Russian text but uh, just the it's hard to put your get that open um, this part, it, uh, it's tough. It's just, it's, it just kind of detracts from the watch. And for me, having a nicer bracelet sort of, you know, that makes the watch better. Don't get me wrong, this Eiko SKX that I just unboxed, the bracelet is stamped just like this thing is, but it, it just operates nicer. Seiko does a good job of making their stuff. Even though they're cheaply made, they operate really well. This, not so much, so... I changed the bezel and the bracelet. I put I ordered this bezel off eBay and I put this thick H-link mesh bracelet. I got this bracelet for about 30 bucks. Clearly it's branded for something else. I just bought it from a an individual on eBay. So, it's not like something you can go out and buy with this specific logo, but uh, um, there's lots of bracelets like this Strapsco for instance, but I just saw this one was cheaper at the time. I didn't want to justify spending like a lot of money on a cheaper watch. Um, so those are the mods. So eventually I want to get a different crown for this, but uh, just the shipping from Russia takes so long, so I've been putting it off. But anyways, so here's some positives. Let's look at the style. Style is really good. Everything's stamped, uh, sorry, printed on the bezel, on the dial. Nothing applied, but we got to keep in mind that this watch is like $70, $80, so. Um, scuba Dude model, the Loom. The Loom is not very good. It doesn't last very long. It works initially, but as I say, with most watches that are cheaper, it dies really quickly. Um, see, the case is high polished. The original bezel, the original bracelet are high polished, so this thing's fully high polished, but the bezel I have has a bit of brushing there. The back is brushed. It's a little rough, as you can see, that it has the uh, Russian text here. 
Amphibia. I'm guessing it says a water resistance anti shock. Watch uh, Oleg's review at 24 hours at a time. He's, he uh, speaks Russian, so he can read this stuff. It's really cool to hear what it says. But I, I love this. I love this classic look. It just is so awesome to me to have something with Russian text. But this cushion case here, it's, as you can see, the machining is very rough. It's not very good. Functionally, this is an awesome watch. Like 200 meters water resistance, screw down crown. The bezel is kind of weird. It's bi-directional. It's friction based. There's no clicks. Um, if you look here in the bezel, there's this little, there's a spring that goes around the bezel. Let's just try and focus here. So this spring goes around the bezel, and that determines how tight it is. This stock one, I got it. It was rather loose. It, you know, not crazy loose, but it was looser than what it is now. But you can bend this thing to make it as tight or loose as you want. So this new bezel here, very tight. Like it's it's hard to move, and honestly, I don't use this for timing really. I just like the looks, but it doesn't move at all. It's tight, so hey, no clicks. But I mean, you know, whatever. It doesn't move. It's 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 fine. So functionally, this watch is really awesome. There's no hacking and there's no quick date, so you have to change the date by either fully spinning it around. Or there's a trick which you can watch tutorials on. I'm currently wearing this watch, so I don't really want to change the date. Well, so I'll do it. So you unscrew the crown, wobbly crown, as you can see. It doesn't really bother me. Supposedly that's a feature. Yeah, so there's ha the movement. You do this. You have to spin it all the way around to when that clicks over. Then you go back to nine, clicks, as you can see the date window, boom. So that's the quickest way to change the date. It's a really, that's the biggest detractor for me. I tend to leave this watch, I'll put it down, and then I'll wear it again the next month when the date is back at what it was, just because that's, to me, that's the biggest detractor. It's a pain. I don't really care about the hand winding, uh, sorry, the lack of hacking, you know, that doesn't bother me. My Seiko doesn't have that either. I really don't care. But that feature, the, the pain day change is annoying. It's not, you know, an arduous task. You can do it. It's just you sit there spending a couple minutes doing it and it's just, you know, it's annoying. But, you know, it's not a huge deal. So, yeah, overall, I really like this watch. Um, I love the style. It's got this sort of, I don't know, it looks like nothing I've seen. I love the cushion case. This thing looks looks so retro to me. Um, that's really what drew me to this version in particular. Um, I have another version of the Vostok 2, but I, I gravitate mostly towards this one just because I like the size. I like the dial. I like that Scuba Doo logo. It's just it's such a cool watch. I'll show you what it looks like on the wrist. It's quite small. I'll put the lug the lug and all that stuff. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. On the wrist, it's not too big. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, so this thing feels really wears well. It's very light. You don't really notice it. Um, this bracelet makes it heavier than this stock junk that comes on it, but it's great. It's, it just looks great. So for me, the biggest thing that this watch has going is a cool factor, or what other people call the X factor. I like the fact that it's a Russian watch. I like the fact that it's a Russian product. You know, where I live in North America, there's, you just, you really don't find Russian products. Like, the only thing that I've seen other than food products is I have a pair of Nokian winter tires for my vehicle, and those are made in Russia. But you really don't see anything Russian. So to me, this was awesome. I love that it has the Cyrillic text, text there, made in Russia. Just Russia, it's just in general such an amazing, interesting country. You know, I'm not getting political here. I'm just saying that I love the culture. I love the history. You know, the fact that this is a Soviet design piece, it's just all of that sort of lore and, you know, history is just really awesome to me. The fact that I could get a Russian product, wear a Russian product, and people say, talk about your watch, and you say, yeah, I'm wearing a Russian watch. Like, 
it's awesome. And despite the f and even though that this is a cheap watch, most people don't even know it. It doesn't look eighty dollars. Like to me, this thing from a distance or even close up looks just as good as any two hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar Seiko. And it's really unique. And I love Seiko, but I love this watch too. I'm not some sort of Vostok zealot that says it's better than anything, because obviously there's attractors. It's not a luxury piece, but you know. You can die with it at 200 meters water resistance, the cool factor, you can travel. I, I, you know, I've traveled the world wearing this thing a little bit, and uh, it's just awesome. It's just such a cool watch. You don't have to worry about it being, you know, if it gets stolen, hey, you can buy another one. Um, it's just such an awesome watch, and I really encourage people who, you know, want to check one out, just do it. It's really cheap. But... Do not go in expecting this to be good. There's some, you know, it's it's not a high-end watch. It's not a Seiko Turtle. It's not, you know, even a Glycine. It's not that watch. It's not even, it's, you know, it's, to me, at least, it feels similar to SKX, but it's not as good. So, overall, this is an awesome watch. The, the functionality, the fact that it's Russian, it's unique, it has an in-house movement, it's inexpensive, you know, all that it's just it's it's so cool to me even just as a novelty like even if you don't wear this thing all the time it's just cool to have a russian product and for me the only detractors is the date change problem uh, you know and the bracelet but you can easily change that and there's tons of modding you can see all kinds of videos of people buying different crowns like this is a brass crown coated people change that put a stainless steel one on you know it's just great like it's just it's such a cool watch change this and it's, it's cheap to mod so if you're into modding and stuff this is an excellent watch to do that but do not expect Seiko quality don't expect uh, you know any Swiss sort of watch this is a watch stuck in time it's the quality you would have got you know 50 years ago from you know, a generic, a cheap watchmaker. It's, it's made for function. It's not meant to be a luxurious piece, and it is really functional. It's just great. So, yeah, I really encourage people to check Vostok's out if you're interested in it. It's a small investment to take, so find one there. There's tons of styles. So, anyhow, thanks for watching my small presentation here. I really appreciate the comments and all that. And so, yeah, thanks a lot. Take care, people. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.